And a good example that I like to give um, uh, was an individual that I worked with in a school system. And um, I had asked, um, I had observed the individual and I had asked the teacher, well, what do you do uh, when this child is having an inappropriate behavior? And one of the targeted behaviors that she was speaking of was that he would get up and he would write on the chalkboard with a pencil. Um, so once I was able to operationally define that um, uh, of him writing on the chalkboard, um, I was able to determine what the function of the behavior was, which was he was trying to gain attention. And as I asked the teacher what it was that she would do when the individual would have the behavior, she would say, well, he needs to know that this is not appropriate and he's going to be punished for doing this. And punishment is often a term that we, that, that's very widely used and, and that seems to be uh, what a lot of, of people uh, have grown up with is aversive types of, of punishments. But I challenged her and I, and I asked her some questions and I said, well, okay, tell me a little bit about what happens and how, how you implement this punishment at school. And she says, well, he needs to learn that he can't write on the chalkboard and that we're the authority, we're the adults and he needs to do what he's told. And I asked again, well, tell me specifically what you do. And she says, well, when he, ha when he writes on the chalkboard, I make him get up, we go into the other room, we get a bucket, we get some suds, we get a, uh, a scrub brush. I stand there with arms folded. She was very detailed when she told me the story. Stand there with arms folded, making sure he fills it up. And I probed her and I let her talk quite a bit. And, and she said that she would make him go out and scrub it. And I asked her, well, how long does it generally take? Well, you know, sometimes he'll take 15 or 20 minutes to scrub on, on the board to get it clean. But when he stops, I tell him, you, you have to do this. You know better than, than to, to, to write on the board. Well, as she told the story, and as I soaked all of this in, and as I observed, I, I got a smile on my face, but I wanted her to, to finish what she was saying. And um, after she finished uh, saying uh, what she had him do with getting the suds and the soap, coming out, cleaning it up, at times having to fold her arms and tell him numerous times, focus, 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 I asked her what she did when he uh, didn't display this behavior of writing on the board. And her response to me was, well, um, we try to generally stay away from him because we don't want him to get upset. And it was a very valuable teaching moment for me because I was able to, not only in my assessment, I was able to hypothesize that the function of his behavior or the reason the behavior was occurring was to gain attention. And what was occurring was the intervention that the teacher and the support staff that was working with the individual, what they were utilizing is what they had been familiar with over the years, which was uh, what they termed as punishment. But what they didn't realize is that two things were occurring. One, he wasn't being reinforced when his behavior was appropriate, when he was sitting and doing his work. And he was also learning that when he was doing something that was inappropriate, in this example, writing on the chalkboard, he got more attention from doing that than he did from doing the right thing. And what was important is when you have someone like an applied behavior analyst that comes in, these are the things that we look at. We try to determine first what the function of the behavior is. Is it to gain attention? Is it to escape? Escape in this instance would be maybe he wanted to get out of doing his work. Maybe he has a uh, behavior of, of, uh, of yelling and screaming, or maybe he has a behavior of throwing pencils, um, you know, during 10 and 11 o'clock in the, in the morning when it's, it's time to learn math. But you don't see that behavior between noon and one at lunch or one and two at physical education because that's an activity that the individual enjoys. That's the beauty of applied behavior analysis, is we, we look at the behavior in, in multiple environments. We, we ask questions and we make observations. When does the behavior occur at the highest level? When does it occur at the lowest level? Is there ever a time that the behavior does not occur at all? Is there a time when a behavior may occur uh, all the time? We put all of those pieces together to try and develop an appropriate plan of action to really help support. And then once we're able to do that, then we can determine whether or not we need to teach replacement behavior strategies. If somebody is trying to gain your attention by writing on the chalkboard, 
punishing the individual by making him uh, clean the board, that may work for some other individuals. It might work. In this case, it was reinforcing the inappropriate behavior. So what, what I did in this instance is we didn't give attention, but we taught him every day as part of his curriculum. During the day, we had replacing behavior exercises. So the teachers that work with him, not just myself, but the teachers and aides, and then also the parents that worked with him were able to, as a, a part of the daily schedule at 8 o'clock in the morning, at noon, and right before he went home, is to have a script of teaching him, we're not going to give you attention when you are writing on the board, here's what's going to happen, but if you raise your hand, we're going to come and talk to you, or if you have an absence of writing on the board every hour, we're going to take five minutes uh, of time to uh, have one-on-one -on -one interaction between you and I and, and really identify and understand the, the, the individual's personal needs because a, a behavior program across the board is fine, but if you don't identify um, the, the individual's specific need and why they're implementing or having that problematic behavior, you're not going to be able to actually uh, put forth a, an effective plan of action to help that person. And that's really what we do as applied behavior analysts, is really work to identify individual issues as they apply to the greater group, and then also teach uh, appropriate social skills and replace and behavior skills that can allow those individuals to still gain and obtain what they're wanting to gain, with our example here, attention, but to do so in a, in a more socially appropriate manner, one that's uh, going to be socially appropriate uh, as well as reinforced in an appropriate manner.